Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Harang Choi. I'm currently undergoing the USMLE journey. If you want to know where I am in my journey right now, you can check out this video right here. If you are here to tune in as to what resources I used for my step one preparation, then continue watching. So the first resource I am going to talk to you about is Patoma. So a lot of people already know about this, but Patoma is such a high yield resource and Dr. Sakar here is such a great, amazing, excellent lecturer. So I started using Patoma in second year of medical school and you can actually do that too if you're still in medical school or you are about to start medical school. I encourage you to use this along with your medical school uh, subjects in second year as all of you know. Med school first year comp is composed of all the normal human anatomy, physiology, and things like that, while second year is when you start learning all the pathologies. And usually in the Philippines, third year is when you learn how to fix those pathologies or manage them. So I started using Pathoma second year and um, along with my med school studies, and I made sure to annotate them. And I also made this thing where you have a checklist per chapter. Um, and I actually did this and I also put the number of hours and minutes that it takes you to finish it and actually the total amounts to 33 hours and 23 minutes. Um, yeah, so I did this after my second year to review and I also annotated a lot of the pages because, you know, his lecture videos are extremely helpful and not everything he says is on this text and what he says during the lectures are extremely high yield for the step one exam. So make sure to listen to the lectures and in order for you to memorize what he says, because you need to remember all these details, detailed information in order for you to apply them to step one. And, you know, we have this learning curve where we start forgetting things after a while. And so if you want to retain a lot of information, make sure to use Anki in order to um, review them well. As for Anki, for Pathoma, there is Duke deck and Pepper deck. I highly encourage you to use the Duke deck um, for Anki. But yeah, I will also say that roughly 50% of step one exam is pathology and that shows how important this resource is. And especially the first three chapters it's highly recommended that you review the first three chapters the week of your step one exam. And so, and I actually did that and it was really helpful. So I encourage you to do that as well. And so, yeah, start um, studying these while in med school. And when you're about to take step one, study it more intensively and memorize the pathophysiology of the diseases mentioned. It's extremely high yield. So that's my first recommended resource. Um, so my second resource is Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. I also used Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm when I was in med school and this was extremely helpful for microbiology and pharmacology but I am going to emphasize this information. You can't just chillingly watch the videos and expect yourself to remember all the details of the image and the details of the disease process and the microbiology facts. What you have to do when you first watch the videos, you have to be actively watching and engaging while watching the video and you have to do active recall and repetition in order for those images to stick. So Sketchy was really helpful for me because I'm a visual learner and the images basically stuck and what I did was active recall when I watched those videos, especially the high yield information, high yield blogs like Staph aureus always comes out, Staph epidermidis, a lot of um, the gram positive uh, bugs comes out a lot, come out a lot in step one exam and for of course both um, gram positive and gram negatives and the viruses, there are so many of them but Sketchy makes it so much easier, even the bugs, even the medications, honestly I'm preparing for step 2 CK right now, but those information and those images still help me until this day. Uh, these things will be useful until step 2 CK, so I highly recommend Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. Just make sure to 
do active recall when you're watching them. So after you watch each video on top of your head, you can try to remember all the details of what you just saw in the video and what those images mean. Like for staff are used, like on top of my head right now, I can remember that there's a cat, which means it's catalyst positive. There's a color agulis uh, positive on the right, the river, the red, and there is the tricuspid valve endocarditis, osteomyelitis, toxic shock syndrome, and you know penicillin and napsilin for the treatment, and also vancomycin if it's um, methicillin resistant staph or use. So all these things I just remembered from the image that there are a lot more in that image actually for that video because it's such a high yield bug, but that's one example um, I can share that I can still remember a lot from. I highly recommend their videos because they're helpful in remembering all the high yield microbiology. The next resource I have for you is Anki. I know it can be using Anki can be tricky for those who have never used it, but there are so many resources online you can learn how to use them. It's pretty simple. Um, you can download the app and start using them pretty quickly as long as you have a deck. So while in medical school, what you can do is download all the pre-made decks. I highly recommend the Anking deck or the Zanki. For Pathoma, there is also the Dupe deck and the Pepper deck. And for microbiology, there is the LOL, not the COP, and the Pepper deck for microbiology. So you can use either of those decks. And they're both excellent decks. They also have images. And so it's really great to review with Anki every day. You don't have to review like a thousand cards a day, but what I did was roughly 150 to 300 cards per day. When I reached Dedicated, I actually made my own Anki cards from the UWorld bank uh, from my incorrects, and that was really, really helpful. I realized that the information I made cards from and reviewed with Anki, I remember them longer, and whenever I encountered the same question again, I would always get them correct. And that shows how um, helpful Anki is in helping you retain the information you learned. So the next resource I have is Birds and Beyond videos. So um, Birds and Beyond videos are created by Dr. Ryan. He is a cardiologist by uh, practice, and but he is an absolutely amazing lecturer. I actually was able to get a lot of my URL questions right because I owe it I owe it to Dr. Ryan because he lectures really well and I learned so much from his videos and uh, watching all his videos will take a lot of time and so if you don't have a lot of time then you can focus on the topics you're weak at or the topics he is great at. So cardiology absolutely amazing and neurology is also absolutely amazing and if you're weak in biochemistry his biochemistry chapter is also amazing. It's a great way to learn especially those you know, the glycogen storage diseases and lysosomal storage diseases, you know, if you look at the first aid book, they do have a table of all the symptoms and the manifestations, all the enzymes that's lacking and deficient in, but they don't really show you why they, these patients will present in such a way because of the deficiency of that enzyme. But Dr. Ryan does a great job in explaining how and why these things happen and it help, he helps you understand the disease, the disease process better and that's absolutely amazing because as all of you know, step one doesn't ask you like a straight, straightforward question but they always make sure to ask questions in a way that's convoluted and multiple layered and even the answer choices, even the questions that I encountered on MBME, they would, for instance, if the answer is heparin induced thrombocytopenia, instead of saying heparin induced thrombocytopenia, they will make a way to describe that and say it in other words, but they would also have an option that says heparin induced something so that you could actually fall for it, but that's actually not the answer, but it's like antibodies against platelets or something like that. So uh, it's important that you understand the disease process, the pathophysiology of each of the disease that come out in step one because that's the step one exam tests what how much you understand about these instead of just asking you straight up like, oh, what's this and what's that and what do you see in each disease? So definitely recommend Words and Beyond videos. And if you don't have time, if you do have, have a lot of time, if you're in pre-dedicated, then I do recommend watching all of his videos. If you don't have enough time, then you can pick 
out the videos or topics that you want to watch and go for it. And I also highly recommend the embryology videos because um, it's so much harder to, so much easier to learn embryology when you see the uh, see it being described in the image and what like metanephric blood turns into and things like that. And so I highly recommend the embryology videos that he makes. So yeah, words and beyond. Other than words and beyond, the next resource I have for you guys is Randy Neal's Biostat. So Randy Neal is a channel on YouTube and he makes absolutely amazing videos as well for step one prep and his Biostat's questions are, Biostat's videos are known to be absolutely amazing and I was able to answer most, maybe 80, 70 to 80 percent of Biostat's questions because by watching two of his videos on Biostat. So I highly recommend you can just go to YouTube, search Randy Neal. I can also put the link down below so that you can go directly to his page and search for the Biostats videos and watch those two videos and you will be set for Biostats other than like um, the ones that are not mentioned on those videos then you can review them on URL. Another YouTube channel that is absolutely amazing is Dirty Medicine. You guys might have heard it already. His channel is has so many high yield videos. I really enjoy watching his high yield practice question. It's a playlist. He has a lot of those and it's basically a question bank in video form. And it's absolutely amazing because I used to, I would listen to those practice questions when I'm about to go to bed or when I'm walking out in the park or while I'm cooking and things like that. So they are amazing videos for uh, when you're just chilling um, because the information is high yield and so you're still learning while you're like walking and things like that. Yeah, he just has amazing high yield step one prep videos. So go check out his channel. And now let's move on to the question banks. So we all know that UWorld is the number one question bank that we have to use if we have to disregard all the other resources for step one. If we had to choose just one resource for step one preparation, that would be UWorld. UWorld is such an amazing learning uh, tool. I consider it as a learning tool and I know the questions are really, really hard and it can be uh, sometimes very discouraging when you get a lot of questions wrong but I think it's important when it, whenever you have a lot of questions wrong it's important to not be discouraged but tell yourself that these are the questions that you have to tackle well in order to raise your score so when you do have a lot of wrongs make sure to review each of those questions well so that the next time you encounter them because you reviewed them so well, you will get them correct and you will get them right and you won't make a mistake anymore on the topic. So I highly recommend that you review your questions well when you do your world bank, your world question bank. And I, uh, for as for my experience, because I had more time than expected when I was preparing for my step one exam, I went was able to go over your world twice. So I did. I did do a second pass and I, if you have enough time, I do recommend that you go over second pass. If you don't have enough time, then you can go over your incorrects and review those incorrects well. That's going to help you a lot. So number one, QBank is definitely URL. But if you are not in dedicated and you don't want to use up the URL questions, what you can do is to use the Ambos question bank. So I also had a period where I used an Ambos questions, but when I was in Dedicated, I realized that Ambos still has a different way of asking questions. They, you can learn a lot from Ambos questions because they do make uh, great questions, but the way they ask is still a little bit different from Ural. And so if you're in Dedicated, I just rec I would recommend uh, going over Ural questions instead, focusing on them instead of focusing on Ambos. But if you are in Pre-Dedicated and you don't want to use, use up Ural questions yet, definitely go for Amboss, but of course, number one is UWorld. Okay, in terms of assessments, uh, we have NBMEs, as all of you know, and other than NBMEs, there is UWorld Self-Assessment 1 and UWorld Self-Assessment 2. UWorld Self-Assessment 1 is supposed to over-predict your score, and UWorld Self-Assessment 2 is supposed to be, it's known to be the most predictive assessment, and so, Make sure to leave that out till the end. What I did was 
roughly two weeks prior to my exam, I took my UL self-assessment one and then roughly 10 days before my step one exam, I took the UL self-assessment two and then four, day, four days before my exam, I took the free 120. The free 120 is a, a free 120 questions provided by NBME and so uh, I will also provide the link to that below, so check that out. The interface of the real exam is exactly the same as the free 120, and so be familiar with that interface when you're doing free 120. Remember, for your real exam, there is no option to suspend a block. You can only end a block. So once you start a block, you cannot suspend it. You have to keep going and answer all the questions until you finish the block, and then you can take a break. But yeah. The interface is exactly the same as the free 120 and so I do recommend going over those questions as well and the questions are also pretty similar. I found my real exam questions most similar to UWorld and free 120 and so I reviewed free 120 really well and actually that was really helpful so make sure to do that as well and as for NVMEs when you are pretty closer to the real exam you can take it either every week once a week or once in every two weeks. So it's up to you how um, you delegate that and which MBMEs to take. Um, there are so many new MBMEs now. Um, back in my, when I was preparing for mine, when I was almost about to take my exam, the new ones came out in March, I believe. And I only got to use one of the new ones and the new ones are, weren't so tested yet. And so the questions weren't really refined based on my opinion and so I stuck with the old um, the 21 to 24 and as well as the 18 and the 19 yeah but I highly depended on my URL self-assessments because they were the most predictive ones and I think that's all I have for you today I hope you found this video helpful. If you are in med school right now, good luck with all your subjects. Do well in med school and enjoy the ride. Um, it's really a great fun experience and remember whenever you get stressed that all these things that we learn it's for it's gonna be beneficial when you encounter patients. It's gonna be all for our future patients and all this information can add up and help us saving a life in the end and so remind yourself that and enjoy learning because it can be absolutely fun if you make it to be. Good luck to all of you. If you are preparing for step one now, keep fighting. Don't give up if this is your dream. Keep going. You will get there somehow in the end and this too shall pass. So thank you guys for all your support. Um, don't forget to like, comment if you have questions and subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.